In this video, we're finally going to put all of our work together to start building a small signal model of the NPN BJT in the forward active region. We've been building towards this for a while, um, but we're going to make the model the exact same way we did for a diode. We'll calculate local derivatives to find the slope of dependency between variables we care about, like, say, collector current and base emitter voltage. Here I'm showing that our BJT symbol can be replaced with a large signal circuit um, shown here, which we've derived before, plus a small signal circuit that's currently blank. I'm using large signal notation in the large signal circuit and small signal notation in the small signal circuit. The first behavior we're going to capture in our small signal circuit is small deviations in the base current as VBE is changed. We, rep we represent these changes using the symbol RPi, which I've written all in lowercase to show that it's a small signal resistor that doesn't exist in the large signal circuit. So this is standing in for our uh, base to emitter diode, um, and there's no resistance in the large signal circuit to measure, it's only the slope of a nonlinear function. The quickest way to understand why we choose a resistor to show the relationship between small signal IB and small signal VBE is that our large signal model has a diode connected between the base and the resistor. And we've already gone through the exercise of finding the small signal model for a diode. We found it was a resistor with a value n phi th over id, um, and so we'd expect something similar for this junction. We can show that formally by taking the derivative of the total signal IB with respect to small signal VBE but we need to find IB first. And here I'm just representing it as the collector current divided by beta, which in the forward active region is um, uh, given approximately by one over beta times Is e to the VBE over phi th minus one, uh, and then finally times this um, base width modulation term. So we take our derivative at the large signal VBE bias point, which gives us an expression that contains uh, over here Is times E to the VBE over phi th. Um, and we pulled down this 1 over phi th from the exponential when we took the derivative. Just like our diode model, We'll say this quantity is about the same as large signal IC. The only difference is this minus one term that we're dropping. Um, so our local derivative is given by IC over beta phi th. However, that derivative is a conductance because it's a current over a voltage. So we let that conductance be defined as one over r pi and then flip it around to find that r pi is equal to beta phi th over IC. So this is the top line expression to take away. That's the expression I use most often to calculate r pi, but we can also sub in that uh, large signal IC is equal to beta times large signal IB, um, which shows that phi th over IB is also an acceptable expression for r pi. Um, and that last expression, phi th over IB, is exactly identical to the differential resistance of the base emitter diode, uh, assuming non ideality factor is 1. If we didn't know anything about the inner workings of a BJT, we would also have to take a derivative of IB with respect to VCE to see if it was appropriate to include some circuit element that represents how IB changes uh, as VCE changes. Taking that derivative would reveal that base width modulation has a small effect on the base current, but because it's a small effect and then it's also divided by beta, we call it second order and don't represent it in the circuit. However, it's worth noting when you're making general small signal models, you need to take derivatives of the variable you care about with every variable that could control it. Next, we're going to consider the effect of the base emitter voltage on the collector current. And we know that the base emitter junction creates a current between the collector and the emitter in our modified U model. So I've included a dependent current source in our model to get started. Uh, 
we know that the dependent current source is there because large signal IC is linear in large signal IB. So the same has to be true for small signals too. Just like we keep resistors in small signal circuits, any linear element will respond the same to both large and small signals with no approximations required. However, it's common to think of amplifiers as having voltage inputs. So it's similarly common to express IC as the product of a uh, transconductance, GM, and VBE. We find the transconductance by noting that GM times VBE must be equal to beta times IB, and that VB is equal to IB times R pi. We can substitute those equations together to note that GM is equal to beta over R pi. That's a nice way to calculate GM using small signal parameters. We can also find GM using large signal parameters by taking a derivative of IC with respect to VBE like we have with all of our other small signal elements. Chasing that through, including substituting for IS e to the VBE over phi th, um, in order to, we find that our uh, local slope is IC over phi th. Um, and so IC over phi th is going to be equal to GM because GM is a conductance. I use this formula to find GM slightly more often than I use beta over R pi, but um, both of them occur quite often, so they're both worth remembering. Um, also, for this formula uh, that represents GM in terms of small signal quantities, I find it easier to remember that GM times R pi is equal to beta than to remember the fraction. Um, so here we have multiple ways we can express the value of IC depending on what's convenient for our calculation and multiple ways we can calculate GM depending on what's convenient for our calculation. Um, so this is a strategic choice you can make when you're analyzing a circuit. Finally, we need to find the effect of VCE on ICE. This current is going to be represented by a resistor between the collector and the emitter named RO, which suggests that current linearly increases with VCE. It's worth noting that RO is usually quite large, around 100k or higher, so the slope of the IC VCE curve will be shallow, which is consistent um, with our observations about base width modulation in the previous video, where changes in VCE only had a weak effect on the collector current. We're going to take a derivative of the IC expression as usual to find the value of RO, so I've copied it here. Taking the derivative, we bring down a factor of the early voltage and then don't need to approximate when we substitute in IC in place of IS e to the VBE over phi th minus 1. This derivative is a conductance, so we define 1 over RO as being equal to that slope and uh, rearrange giving us a resistance of uh, the early voltage divided by the collector current, um, which is usually a large number divided by a small number, say 200 volts divided by 1 milliamp, uh, which is where the hundreds of kilo ohms of resistance come from. This equation captures a feature we can see on our ICE graph, IC VCE graph. If we assume that VA is much bigger than uh, the VCE that we're operating at, then the slope of our IC VCE line has a rise of IC and a run of about VA. So uh, here our local slope on the IC VCE curve is given exactly by our, or the inverse of our local slope is given exactly by VA over IC. Our local slope is given exactly by IC over VA, our rise over our run. In, in general, each of our small signal models corresponds to some slope on our IV curves. So for instance, um, GM is related to how changing VBE changes ICE, so it has to do with the separation between each of these curves. 
and it's worth remembering that IV curves are an exact representation of the underlying Ebers mole model. Um, I wanted to emphasize that because we're going to play a trick with IV curves in the next video. So remember that um, uh, the small signal model is visible in the IV curves because the IV curves exactly represent the underlying Ebers mole model. In summary, BJTs have a U-shaped small signal model, which it turns out is called the hybrid pi model. The base emitter current is represented by a resistance R pi that's equal to beta times phi th over IC. The collector emitter current is contributed to by a current source that can be represented two ways. Um, IC is either equal to beta IB or GM times VBE, where the transconductance GM is beta over R pi or IC over phi th. The collector to emitter current is also contributed to by a resistance representing the base width modulation. Um, that resistance is called RO, uh, and it's equal to VA over IC.